So you want to know about spiritual growth in prayer. Well, would you like to know how to bring real results through your prayers? In this video, I'm going to show you five principles that develop a fruitful spiritual life in prayer. Number one, knowing God in prayer. Abraham knew God and knew how to pray to him because he had a personal relationship with his God. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. You can learn things about God that help you in your prayer life to see good things in your life and all around you. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. In my interpretation of Old Testament scriptures, I have the ability to see things through the eyes of Jesus Christ, as you do. So what do I get from this verse? Prayer is speaking with God. A believer has a say in God's presence. Abraham had God's time and attention while in prayer. God didn't leave until the communication was over. God is a gentleman. God values prayer. God values humanity's relationship with him. When you pray, God listens. Your perspective is important to God. There are things you will notice about God that others miss. You have a unique revelation of God. We must understand that Old Testament prayers are not necessarily the way God operates in New Testament times. Our intercession must be in line with God's character and covenant with men. We must know God personally and his ways of interacting with humans in the age that they live in. Jesus was sent to reveal to us today the character and covenant of God. Grace, Holy Spirit, love, faith, hope. When you discover who you are in God today because of Jesus Christ, and when you discover the way God interacts with humans today in this age of grace, and our ability to connect with him through the power and relationship with the Holy Spirit. You and I can see prayers answered in a greater degree. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. God will reveal himself personally to you today as you spend time in your personal prayer room, in your time in the Bible, in worship. You will encounter revelation from heaven. And as you open and study the scriptures and learn who God is in this generation, this season of your life, you will understand how to connect, how to pray, and see greater results in and through your prayers. Can I pray this for you right now? Father, help us to understand in the New Testament times how to pray, how to resource ourselves with your grace, how to open up even now to your Holy Spirit as we pray. We welcome you to help us and teach us and show us how to connect with you, how to see you, how to view ourselves in this New Testament age in relationship with you. Show us things that are unique about you through our unique perspective. We want to know you. We want to grow in our spiritual relationship with you in prayer. Number two, a yielded heart in prayer. There are wonderful things that happen when you yield your heart and open up to God's guidance in prayer. Focusing on God's honor, not his own, Moses begged God not to destroy Israel. When Israel fooled around with building a golden calf and became an offense to God through idol worship, Moses stood in the gap. Moses offered himself in place of them for judgment so that God would pass over them. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them had not Moses, his chosen one, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath. God's purposes for Israel stayed intact because Moses yielded to God, yielded to the Spirit and interceded and prayed for the people when they were walking away from God. Moses had stood between Israel's sin and God's wrath. 
When we pray for people in the world today, we're interceding for them. We're standing in the gap between their sin and God's wrath. We're welcoming the Spirit to come around their hearts to open them up to the story of the gospel, the good news, where Jesus has dealt with their sins. Unselfish intercession prevails beyond the otherwise destructive effects of human weakness and sin. Where there is no hope, Prayer and intercession for others makes a way for God's miracles to move on their behalf. Moses accepted God's verdict on the wayward Hebrews, but pleaded that God would not deal with them in a way that would taint his honor or break his promises to them. The fastest way to see results in your prayers is to yield to God and pray God honoring prayers, to follow his will, his nature, his purposes, and to love others and bring them out of darkness into his light. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, O oh, these people have committed a great sin and have made for themselves a God of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book, which you have written. Moses' heart was selfless. He even prayed to God that he would be blotted out of God's book. And we see this, that he had such a yielded heart to God in prayer and selflessness for the Israelites around him. How do we yield our hearts in prayer? Humility. Focus on God's agenda, not your own. Worship. Reading the word. Prayers of consecration. All of these things make a way for our hearts to be prepared to pray selfless prayers that are yielded to God's heart so that miracles are the result. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. If you've been liking this video so far and you haven't done so already, hit the like and subscribe buttons and the notification bell so you can receive more of these videos in future. And please send them out to your friends so that they can be encouraged and drawn into God's presence as well. Number three, a surrendered life in prayer. Joshua's relationship with God and yielded heart to God led him to a surrendered life of obedience, following God's will and stepping out in his ways. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Joshua was in the midst of claiming the promised land when he was defeating an enemy and the day was drawing on. So he prayed and he spoke and God stopped the sun and moon from moving. He allowed the day to be extended and so that he could win the battle that day. And the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. If you see a football game, the coach calls the plays. The player on the field who's the captain, it might be the quarterback, calls the plays to the players on the field. And all the players get in position. And when it's time for the quarterback to get the ball, he throws it to the right location. If that player is in the right place at the right time, following the directions of the coach, that person is there to catch the ball and run to score a touchdown. And that's the same as life. As we hear the directions of God and we're moving in his direction and we're following his will and we're at the right place at the right time, it's so easy for him to drop the ball into our hands, for miracles to happen, for us to go across that line and to win in life. When you heed the Lord's voice, you are positioned for him to heed your voice. As a pastor, I receive many requests for prayers. As I receive requests for people who have been moving in God's direction and will and purposes, yielded to him, having a close personal relationship with him, walking with a heart open to his ways, I see the results of prayer happening more frequently in their lives. But when I have the opportunity to pray for people who are moving against God's will or walking in rebellion, it's very rare that I ever see God's powerful, miraculous results 
happen through our prayers. It's sad to say many Christians are out of place. They're walking in rebellion. They're walking with hard hearts. They're not listening to God. They're doing their own thing, their own way. And it's hard for prayers to be answered when we're walking away from God. So if you are, turn around and run back to him. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants to pass you the ball. Open up and receive his goodness. In the video description, I have a wonderful free link for you. Download the Bible app. Scroll down to prayer. Click on pray now and then follow the prompts. It's that easy. There's some wonderful fresh ways for you to pray every single day. So I encourage you to grab that link in the video description today. Number four, power released in trust filled prayer. The king of Assyria sent his servant to Hezekiah, the king of Jerusalem. And he said, I'm going to wipe you out. But God told Hezekiah through the prophet Isaiah, don't be afraid of him. We must trust God in hard times to allow him to come and move on our behalf because of our prayers. And so it was when King Hezekiah heard it, that he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. Then he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, Shibna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. Hezekiah didn't give up in hard times when he heard bad news. He sent his men to Isaiah so that he could hear fresh news from the Lord. And Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid of the words which you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Just like Hezekiah, the devil will send people and circumstances your way to cause you to stop trusting God, to cause you to be filled with fear. But what do you do? Then Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God, you alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God. Therefore, O Lord, our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord. God honors his children when they turn to him with trust-filled prayer. Then the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, there were the corpses, all dead. From that point onward in history, Assyria began to decline. And before that, they had enjoyed two centuries of overcoming and conquest. And this is a wonderful example of trust-filled prayer. Number five, prayers to God in the gap. God is always looking for people who are willing to fill the gap in prayer. What does that mean? So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. Standing in the gap is a famous prayer term that means we're praying for others. Gap, perets, a break, gap or breach, especially a gap in a wall. In the present reference, Ezekiel 22.30, standing in the gap is a metaphor for committed intercession. There is a gap between God and man that an intercessor tries to repair. Our goal in prayer, when we're standing in the gap, interceding for others, is meeting people's needs with God's mercy. A gap was a break in the protective thorny hedge or wall of stones that surround a vineyard and invited trouble. Sin causes a gap or a breach between God and humans, and His mercies and His goodness can't reach them. But intercession and prayer in the gap brings these people together with God. In our day, the protective hedge, wall, about families, churches and nations is often in a state of terrible disrepair. God is still searching for intercessors to stand guard in the gap and by prayer to help repair the breaches.
That's why this next video is so important for you and I. Spiritual power in prayer. In this next video, you'll see four power principles linking God's grace to us in prayer. So watch that coming up next.